Office of the Integrity Commission to begin educational outreach sessions this week. Details to this and other stories in the National Report. With the National Report, I am Christina John. The negative effect of corruption is expected to be a major talking point when the Office of the Integrity Commission begins a series of outreach sessions this week. The first session will be held with staff of the Immigration Department on Thursday. Justice D. Monica Joseph, chairperson of the Integrity Commission, will also look at the Integrity in Public Life Act, Prevention of Corruption Act, Responsibilities and Powers of the Commission, and Requirements of File Declarations. She will also focus on the establishment of risk management procedures based on an outline from recent workshops by Dr. Roger Corrington. He is responsible for public sector governance and anti-corruption at the Commonwealth Secretariat. Some of the primary functions of the Commission are to receive and examine declarations of the assets, liabilities, income and interests in relation to property of persons in public life and to give effect to the provisions of the Inter-American Convention Against Corruption. The poor dietary choices that people make which result in chronic non-communicable diseases, a leading cause of death not just in Grenada but the wider Caribbean, came to the fore at the World Food Day celebration on Sunday. During the celebration, booths showcasing a variety of local dishes, vegetables, fruits, beauty products made from local ingredients, plants and much more were on display for the general public to sample and purchase. More in this report from Rikisha St. Louis. Speaking on the theme, Climate is Changing, Food and Agriculture Must Too, Minister for Agriculture, Lands, Forestry and the Fisheries, Honorable Yolen Bain Hosford, said the issue of climate change and its effects on the sector must not be taken lightly. She said the time is now for the agri-food sector to become more resilient to climate change. The ministry is committed to strengthen its collaboration with regional and international partners in the fight against climate change. World Food Day 2016 presents us with an opportunity to highlight the need to change food and agriculture in order to adequately respond to the challenges of climate change. Over the years, Grenada has recorded a number of deaths as a result of chronic diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, strokes, and the leading cause being cancer. Senior Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Francis Martin, told the gathering that the results are startling. He explained that chronic diseases, especially among young people, are as a result of poor dietary habits and food choices. The world of public health also recognizes and understands that these diseases have a direct correlation with behavior and diet. We're aware that there are lots of toxins in the foods that we eat, especially imported foods. And so it's important that small countries like us recognize this and put lots of, uh, lots of attention to our local agricultural products. The event was attended by the Cuban ambassador to Grenada, Cultural Minister Senator Brenda Hood, and other officials. The evening ended with cultural performances and live band music. For the National Report, I am Rakesha St. Louis. Several farmers and farmers' organizations were awarded during the annual World Food Day celebrations on the weekend. They were recognized for their contribution to the development of the sector and adapting climate-smart agricultural practices. Among the awardees were the School for Special Education, St. Patrick's Anglican Primary, and New Life Organization. More than 15 individuals and organizations were recognized as outstanding clubs and schools, outstanding youth farmers, organizations, and outstanding female farmers. This is the National Report. More news after the break. you know that the proposed amended constitution mandates political parties to strive to promote and pursue gender equality when nominating candidates for elections and influencing appointment of persons such as members of the Senate? Vote on referendum day to promote gender equality. Yes, we need reform, constitutional reform. Yes, we need reform, constitutional reform. 
Education Minister Anthony Boson was on the move again recently, visiting the Snell Hall Pre-Primary and Rose Hill Infant Schools. He was accompanied by other members of the ministry's team. Details in this report. At the Snell Hall Pre-Primary School, the minister and his team received a warm welcome. When I look around, I must indeed say that I am extremely pleased with the environment that you have created for your school. The minister pledged his continued assistance to the school. At the Rose Hill Infant School, another lively visit began. This visit is history. We are willing to assist you in meeting some of the challenges that you have identified. We do see the potential for this institution to grow and to play an even more creative role in fashioning the minds of our young people. Students entertained the minister and his team at both schools and teachers and students got the opportunity to interface with the team. For the National Report, I'm Annette Moore. And that's the National Report. I am Christina John. Thank you for joining us.